deal with. Going to a character like Snake, where now you have to be extremely patient. It's very easy to get caught up in a pace and have that carry. That. So I think that's a really important thing to have. Even, like, not just for that reason, of course. Obviously, CS has a very strong character, and I'm sure she has a good match if she doesn't. But, for those reasons. Zerdo with the Palu as opposed to the Zelda. Understandable for this matchup. Um, Palu has a lot of great setups. Obviously, the typical like down throw to Baron if they DI in. Um, and also, just in general, like ZSS is just so light to the point where Palu just lands one hit. Any sort of like kill confirm hit, then you're pretty much dead at any percent. Like at 80% or like 70, you're. you're, you're in that percentage range for a lot of power skill setups. I think a big part of it too is the ability to box with ZSS. Um, Zelda's neutral tools are pretty limited. They're very strong, but they're not good for like setting a presence out there. They're good if you can confirm into them or if you have a hard read. Whereas uh, Palutena has the ability to put out things like her Nair, her Fair, her Bear, uh, relatively riskily, but still uh, setting up in the neutral, which is something that you want to do against CSS because if you don't have any neutral presence, you will absolutely run you over. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to be taken to the corner, and then her corner mix is not the scariest thing in the world, but like getting out of the corner mix means you have to go back to neutral with CSS, which is just picture for you. Yeah, and speaking of lacking risk, I think one advantage that Palu has in this matchup is definitely like being able to edge guard. Because in this matchup, typically a lot of characters will struggle to uh, edge guard ZSS just because she has like the little like, flip kick mix ups. Like she can slip, she can flip kick onto platform for safety. But with Palu, you can kind of just throw out the explosive flame, and all of a sudden the ZSS is scared to jump. And I think if you're able to scare the ZSS from jumping, you're putting him in a really disadvantageous position. Uh, I agree. I think uh, explosive flame, like you said, being out there and lingering is the big deal. Even if it's not completely in the way, the idea that this move that can kill you, especially if you're light like the FS is, uh, is a factor that a lot of characters don't really have. Although, uh, I will say, him having Zelda in the pocket, although this is a probably not worth it in this matchup, uh, does have something like that, so that experience can very well carry over and using the pressure of an additional projectile to sort of set up your lunch game. Oh, he actually got the on that one. I wonder if that was, uh, the guy. Oh, you can hit. Yeah, I wonder why he rolled there. It looked like he rolled and then went for a B. I'm quite sure. Um, it's very hard to single hit and turn sometimes. Long. Granted, Paralyzer gives you a little bit of extra time than some other form, but it might have just been like a, oh, you know, I'm not entirely sure if this will hit, so I'll go for a defensive option and then I can confirm it after the fact. <laughs> uh, I killed a great. I'm surprised I killed so much this Yeah, I feel like uh, coming from Smash 4, I heard like, oh, you know, CSS is. Uh, booster kick up the smurf. It's not what it once was, but then people are still dying at like 115, 120 or yeah. earlier for much. Yeah. You know what it is? I think people are just so used to the fact that Smash for Up B was so like busted and even even like a lot of the time like ZSS's wouldn't even go for the final hit. They would go for one of the multi hits and the rage would cause their opponent to fall out of it and die at like crazy low percents, like 50, 60. I feel like that kind of set the tone for like how powerful a like, DSS was in Smash 4. And now that it's like just slightly nerfed, they're like, oh, it's not nearly as intimidating. But like that example right there, when he died at like 100 mid stage, it's like, yeah, this up is still ridiculously good. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so uh, I'm gonna hop off the mic now and I'm gonna get some space to my boy Bars returning. You all give him some love. Thank you very much for uh, being here to commentate these. It's been fun. Yeah, awesome. Happy to have you here. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Right, going to Zelda, that's going to be best day. Um, I would say in this scenario, um, honestly, I, I would just say, like, 
keeping ZSS out is obviously like the game plan, but I feel like that's kind of the flow chart game plan every Zelda has versus other characters. But I think in this one in particular, uh, ZSS has like the speed to kind of navigate around Phantom Knight. Like obviously there's the flip kick, she can just like full hop over it and just throw out an air and keep Zelda out. So really the object here is like, Take advantage of what you got, right? If you can get that grab, if you can get that up tilt, convert as much as you can off of that. Because ZSS is still a light character, and since she is light, you can definitely get some really crazy kills. Like if you if you miss space that Nair on shield, like ZSS, I'm sorry, Zelda will abuse. You just gotta be very cautious. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry. Let me just join the stream chat. So. Best gang in New York, huh? Bro, I've always been the best gang in NYC. Okay. Alright. Um, okay, so where are we at right now? Uh, okay, so we have Sourdough and Sensei. Yep. Uh, Sourdough was originally playing uh, Pautena, but is now playing Zelda. Okay, makes sense. Um, I know Sensei in particular has been using ZSS to try to... Uh disconnect okay they, they, they couldn't handle you know what it is they couldn't handle the best ganon in new york city entering the chat that's what happened oh man um okay they so couldn't handle it no not at all but um just to finish just to finish on my thought though um mm -hmm. i know sensei he, you know he's normally a snake main and um yep. i know he's been playing zss to work on matchups probably like zelda and palutena which like he could probably overcome because snake is a good character but in the long run, it's, it's like kind of uh, it's very stressful for him and stuff like that. So ZSS is a competent pick in matchups like that, where ZSS kind of crawl over those characters. But um, as we can see, it seems like ZSS's pressure is too much for the stream to handle. Oh man. Yeah, um, I suppose. Yeah, good times. I like the music, Devin. Yeah, Devin. Thanks. Um, yeah, because usually I have it muted um, whenever I join uh, the other chat, the Fight Club chat, because it's like really loud and I don't know what's going on. But this is actually a very nice level, and I can hear myself think. So you know, you can turn it. down like when you just like the way you change anyone else's volume, like in the room, you can do it to the jam bot. Yeah, I, I, I know, but like even channel. when I do, yeah, even when I did try to turn it down before, it was still kind of still kind of more loud than I thought than I wanted it. To. So I just weird. Left it alone. Yeah, weird stuff. But it's okay as long as I could, uh, you know, talk to the chat the way I want to. But um, yeah. So what do you think they fixed with the patches? I feel like they fixed. I know, I know they listed the things that they fixed, but I feel like the main fix was probably some of the weird bug things when it comes to stages. Sure. Do they? I believe they fixed. Like, I think, I don't know if this is a rumor or anything, but I'm pretty sure they fixed the shadow buffs. I could be wrong on that, though. Yeah, 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 I think they did, too. I think, I think that's what happened. Um, it seems like Sourdough won, so let's see if Sensei is going to stick with his ZSS. Uh, doesn't look like he is. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, no, snake time. Let's go. <laughs> Unless he's just changing the stage, I have no idea what's happening. He might just be changing the stage. That's true, too. Yeah, okay, oh. looks like he probably the stage change. Okay, so I like the commitment. The ZSS. I like the commitment to the character. Yeah, I like the commitment, especially this is an environment now where you want to work on characters Three, in two, matchups that you're not familiar one, with or need to work on. So if you want to use this character to be important, this is the best chance to do it, you know? And, you know, right at the start of the match, this is something that probably Snake would not be able to do against Zelda, get in her face and try to pressure her at the corner where you want her where, where you want her to be with less space as possible. Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. And I, I was just saying earlier with the, uh, the first game, Zelda's one of those characters where, like, she has that trouble to get in, like, she lacks that approach, but once she's in, she can just convert so much. Like, her throws are, like, decent combo throws. Her kill power is amazing, and yeah. her out of shield up B is probably one of the best out of shield up in the game, honestly. Like, it's ridiculously good. <laughs> yeah. And I was just about to say, it seems like Sourdough with his out of shield options is doing pretty well, and it looks like he's calling out a lot of these aerial approaches coming out from Sensei, kind of tele telegraphing them a little bit. And yeah, like I like I said earlier, the out of shield options, uh, Sourdough immediately capitalizing off of uh, Sensei whipping for the back.
Yeah, and uh, right now, uh, since he's just trying to um, keep Zelda at the ledge, but heavily committed with that up smash. It didn't matter, because the SS is fast. Yeah, indeed, and I think that's really what makes this match a pain for Sir Zelda, because ZSS just has the speed to compete with her. Like, if, if Zelda throws out a Phantom Knight, under normal circumstances, that could come off as like, intimidating, you might be too scared to challenge it. Mm -hmm. But literally, all ZSS has to do is jump, do her typical like space nair, or even like space bear game plan, and it works beautifully. You can even flip kick as like a little mix up, so it's like all of a sudden that Phantom Knight needs to be timed and it needs to be like well planned. It can't just be the special that you throw out. Yeah, um, like uh, what Zelda's do get away with sometimes uh, is that they tend to get away with just throwing out Phantom whenever they want to and throwing out buttons and clipping people like uh, Sourdough <laughs> just did, throwing out a forwarder and clipping him. Um, <laughs> but I think what Sensei needs to do right now is just. I know he wants to keep pressure in Sourdough's face, but I think Sourdough's kind of capitalizing off of that by just calling out his aerial approaches, remaining patient, mixing up his ledge up pretty well, but essentially just give him space and, you know, got the stuff. Okay. okay. It's a dash attack. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Sourdough's getting, he's getting off out of the corner really easily. And I think this is the problem Sensei is kind of having keeping him in the corner because Sarado is mixing it up pretty well on how he wants to come in the corner and not just doing something static like rolling or jumping up the ledge immediately. Pretty slippery. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, now this is where Sensei needs to capitalize off of this. And that was a great punish, but threw him back towards the center of the stage. Oh, you died, right? Yeah. Oh, you! Oh, what? Oh, no. <laughs> he choked. Oh, no. I, I think he just, he kind of compensated a little bit too hard for, like, where Zelda was going to pop out. Oh, I see. But, oh, it works what? out. <laughs> it worked out anyway. So. Um, good stuff by Sensei. Actually, just, actually tearing it up a little bit. Um, towards the end of that stock, because it seemed like Sarda was in pretty good control, and then Sensei, once he got him in that corner at that mid percent, he kind of just held held advantage really well, and Sarda kind of faltered. Like this is around, you know, about the six percent mark when he just kind of started taking over. He really went out there as well. You kind of get that privilege as the SS. You can just run out there as far as you can, go for Edge Guard, and if it whiffs, put it back. Yeah. If it doesn't whiff, then you get that kill and you get happy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, and the Sourdough has been doing a really good job of just calling out Sensei's aerial approaches, but um, it just seems like Sensei towards the end of it just figured it out. Um, let's see what we're going to do going into game four, right? I like the pick, Kalos. It's a good stage for Zelda. Give himself a little bit more room to breathe. And something Sarado has been consistently doing was um, he's been breaking up a lot of Sensei's uh, opportunities with uh, Neighbor's Love. And let's see if Sensei get a whole Carl on the Neighbor's Love. Because if he's gonna let him keep doing it, yeah, keep doing it, Sarado. Yeah, I feel like at some point the Nairu's love is just going to become too obvious and then Sensei can kind of just take advantage of that. And that, and that uh, Phantom catching either Sensei with a shield bump or Sensei being a little bit more impatient. And you see he's been using a little bit more side B to keep uh, Sour do at bay rather than just like jumping in his face like he was trying to do earlier. Really, ooh, that was a nice forwarder. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> called out that side, yeah, I was just raising the forward with a quarter to his face. Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna take it. Um, yeah, I wonder how Sensei's gonna navigate around this. It seems like a lot of the time he's trying to retreat to these platforms, and he just... I don't know, it, do, it doesn't seem like he's used to that. Because typically you'll see, like, Sensei likes to kind of go in, likes to, like, push forward a little bit. Mm. But in this scenario, whenever he's trying to jump back to the platforms, he's like, oh, how do I get back to center stage? And then as soon as he tries to go back to center stage, he gets hit by Phantom Knight. So hopefully he'll figure out a way around it. Um, game yeah. plan really is to just mix your jumps. 
Yeah, and this is exactly why Sourdough picked the stage for exactly what you're saying. Um, it just seems like he's always he always has a chance to get out the Phantom or get out his uh, big bodyguard. He kind of just like deal with the SS in the mid range game. And that's why you've been seeing Sensei out for a lot more side beats than usual. But it just seems like he hasn't been able to pressure as much, him as much as he wants. But you know, it's still a close game. Like you know, he can get a quick back air like towards the end of the stage. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, you can't touch that shield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mashing a little bit too hard in the shield there. Got a little bit too happy with the A button. Oh, uh, I was... <laughs> oh, I was just about to say, that was a really good stall by Sensei, and then he goes in this <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was actually about to pop up a little. I was like, wow, that's like a brilliant way to come back to stage. And then he SD, and I'm just like, wow. Like, that's yes. a brilliant way to SD. <laughs> like, yes, I'm a snake man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, with that being said, um, still a pretty much even game. It seems like Sensei has been slowly taking control of the mid-range, but... Uh, oh yeah, you can't do that to that forward air, man. Um, especially hit him with tipper forward air on shield, man. You cannot up the up the other shield. Okay, well, I'm surprised the dash attack work. I didn't think that would get through it, but that's I guess that's a good option to get through Phantom Knight. I'm not too sure. Um, it, it, it feel like it, it was kind of like a Lloyd Racket thing, like, you know when you first spawn Lloyd Racket, there's that time period where you can just, uh, run through it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, ve it's very similar to that, where like, you could just probably run through that in that cat. Um, but with that being said, Sourdough calling out another one of Sensei's, uh, aerial approach options with a bodyguard swipe phantom. So, good stuff to Sourdough. I'm curious to know what the counter pick will be here. That jump, yeah. Sensei and Sensei was retreating too. He was just like, you know, I don't want to touch that shield. He's probably gonna up the shield if I touch his shield. And he got hit by the Phantom anyway. Yeah, probably been rough going in that situation, honestly. Because like, if you hit, uh, you know, if you hit Zelda, Phantom drops. So, this what it is. What stages do you think uh, he's banning right now? Here's Arado. Hmm, it's hard to say. I don't. I don't know if Sensei is gonna switch characters or stay with CSS. So I'm not too sure. I would imagine. It's hard to say on the stage list, honestly. I don't know what he would ban. Um. Hmm. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Yeah. That was really funny. <laughs> the little like wall jump, like epic wall jump to just SD. That's yeah, perfect. It was, it was just like I'm so smart. <laughs> That's what I would say. <laughs> Oh, okay, PS2. Yeah. In my head, I'm guessing Sourdough would ban like the small stages. I'm guessing. So. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. Uh, all right. Sensei kind of just walled out the side special. Um, yeah, in general, I think. I guess dude does kind of complement CSS with play because you can like flip kick from platform to platform and kind of navigate around stuff like Phantom Knight. You can just stay within the air, be safe, and not have to worry about approaching. But it's like, at the same time, I feel like Sourdough has done a really good job of just anticipating that. Like anticipating jumps, covering it with like up airs and even when Sensei lands on shield, like, Sarado has that up the edge of the pocket. Ooh, that was nice. Really nice movement. Oh, wow. Catching the tech will in. Oh, shoot, he's just going in. Look at that. Yeah, and, you know, this is, this is kind of what Sensei needs to do. And, um... And he's been... The way he's utilizing the side B this game, um... He used that really well as an approach option, as a stuff option, as stuff approaches. He had a shield once again. It's just, it's. I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm absolutely gobsmacked at his play right now. Yeah, man. He's just, he's just doing it, man. Like, honestly, this is a really bad match. This is actually a really bad match with Zelda, right? Because, like, she doesn't really have the speed and the. The, the speed and the frame data to compete with ZSS in this type of like small environment, and he's just dash attacking low. Yeah, yeah, and Sensei just going high and kept flipping over, and Arado can't do anything about it. 
You know what's crazy about that up smash? So, Tharadon has been coming off a ledge and doing forward air on his shield and Neighbor's love on his shield the whole time, and this is the one game where he's just like, okay, well, I dare you to do it again. It's definitely a lot of like, confidence. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, that's... Oh, he wanted to go for the swag, paralyzing people, or the down smash. He didn't need to do that. Um, oh, no. Don't. <laughs> Uh, all, all we need is the SD and the ZS Tessels is the extra combo. <laughs> okay, but you know, let's see what Sour Go Do can do. Like, it's looking pretty grim for him, but, um, you know, anything is possible. Yeah, once he gets him around like 60 or 70, that's when he can start looking for kills. You know, like, right now, Sour Go is in survival mode. Ooh, that, that was, did you see the coverage on that? Oh wow. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> oh, oh, that was a gamble. That was such a gamble. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay, okay oh, that's yes, how you yeah. do it. Ooh, that's shield pressure. Okay. Oh, you died. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, so Sarado, um, he just started going off his end that, but a little bit too late. Um, it's a pretty big lead already. By sensei uh just putting on pressure like the whole game five and that night into grab man that was pretty cool and since i was like all right uh up smashed stupid <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th I think sensei just got a little bit lazier that stock and then as soon as sourdough just took the second stock he's like yeah now i kind of have to like win this <laughs> and he just went right for that up smash um yes. that said though i loved like right here, he does a lot of nice uh, movement. He did a lot of like side B to cover his recovery, side B to space, side B to maintain safety mm -hmm. on shield, just stuff like that. When you have that on deck, then you're, you're, you're bound to never get hit. And I feel like during that first minute or so, like Sensei just knew exactly how to navigate around Sarudo. Yeah, and um, another thing that um... Sensei was doing like he was speeding up Sourdough a lot, right? So like usually like during the set, even the sets that Sourdough lost, he's kind of playing at his own pace. 